Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hello everyone, Carrie here with Unicorn Company coming to you from Outreach because this force pack has a couple of mechs that are very Wolster Goon centric and that force pack is the Inner Sphere Assault Lance. Looking at the first of these mechs, we have the Hoplite. The Hoplite is a medium mech and it's really always looked a little weird. I know I say that about a lot of them, but it's true. To be fair, this one is its own kind of awkward, but nice. Like, the miniature itself is wonderful. Like, looking at the miniature, it's very well detailed. All the details are very, they're sculpted into it really well. This should look amazing once it's painted up. But it's evolved into looking like a baby king crab. Like, this is what you get before you get a full-size king crab. And there's part of me that would love to see, like, if I could get hold of crab arms and another one of these hoplites, I would totally want to, like, swap out the arms with crab arms or with king crab arms so that it's, like, a baby king crab. But let's actually look at the miniature and um, go over it. So all the way around, like I said, it's very well detailed. There are a couple little tiny heat sinks on the back of the hips and on the bottom of the legs for those of you who like to do your glowing heat sinks. Um, and of course it also has like the air vents on the front, which I guess could be heat sinks. I'm not quite sure on that. The cockpit is very well delineated and nice and big, so you're not going to mistake anything else for it. It does have like a little corner spot that could be glass or could not be glass. I can't tell. Looking at the mold lines and stuff, on the front of the mech's right leg, there's a mold line running down the top of the thigh, and it's also on the left leg, but it's not too bad, should be easy to remove. You're going to have to get in there with a hobby knife, because there's not a lot of room for a sanding stick. And from the front, front, from the front, the mech's right arm looks good. It does have that burring that you always get around them. And the mech's left arm, I believe it's an SRM-4 in there. It does look like it's sort of crammed in, though. So I, I don't know if I really like that detail. On the mech's left side... Oh, also, is that a clip point or is that... No, that's just a detail. Also on the mech's left side, it looks nice and clean. I don't see anything that sticks out as far as mold lines or anything like that. Um, and then when we get to the back of the mech... Also done very well. Don't see any mold lines running down the left leg, though there is a clip point near the top on a corner. And on the right leg, there's a little tiny bit of a mold line, but nothing that sticks out to me really well. And then once we get to the mech's right side, once again, it's nice and clean. And the only other place I can kind of see a mold line is on the top, running across between the two vents really 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 shallow though you don't even feel it you can just kind of tell that's where it was done so overall the miniature is really well done looking at the alpha strike card for it we have the hoplite 4d which is 25 points this is available from the clan invasion forward it's a battle mech size 2 tmm1 movement of 8 inches it's a sniper short medium and long of 1 no overheat value with armor of 6 and structure of 5 with a flak of 111 and indirect fire zero. So if you're looking for a light anti-air asset in Alpha Strike, this isn't bad. Um, this is definitely not a front liner because it's with its slow speed, it's gonna get eaten alive. The other side, we have the Hoplite 5C, which is 32 points and available from the Dark Age forward. It's a battle mech, size two, TMM1, movement of eight, it's a brawler. Um, I wouldn't recommend brawling with a medium that does, yeah, let's see, no overheat, armor of six, structure of three, so it's not bad. It actually, ironically, though, has less health than the older version, but it does come with ballistic resistant armor, 
case two and indirect fire zero asterisk so not bad overall all right the next mech we have here is the shogun which is another classic wolf's dragoons mech the detail on this is done really well it does feel softer as far as in the back on the details than all the other miniatures so far also for those of you who have always said that there are not enough large panels to put decals or to freehand or anything like that this one on the front of the mech is full of nice big large panels and even on the top looking at it as far as mold lines we have a mold line that is apparent that runs down the entire length of the outside of the mech's right leg on the front on the corner should be pretty easy to clean there's also one on the corner facing inside so that's something you're gonna have to clean up on its right leg there's the same mold line but it's not nearly as pronounced the torso doesn't look like it has any specific mold lines sticking out and the torso weapon the gun on the torso doesn't have the burring on the front but there is a mold line that runs down the length of it that you'll have to clean up as well with like a sanding stick none of that should be hard to get rid of the arms do have a mold line that runs around the diameter of the front of the arm at the corner they tried to hide it didn't do the greatest job but once again not hard to get rid of you can more feel it than see it going to the mech's left everything looks nice and clean the top of the torso has like these little vertical stabilizers which i think are funny because they actually have like they look like they're taken right off of a jet you'll, you'll see what i mean when the rotation and there is a little bit of a mold line on the insides of those towards the back shouldn't be hard to clean up as well it's on a flat surface the rear of the mech i mean it's detailed and there is a mold line that runs down the entire length of each leg towards the outside not the greatest qc on this one i i don't i don't know if it's just the way they set it up or if it was a mold issue when they cast this one but i'm not a big fan of it but you can see the jump jets well delineated on it as well as the heat sinks on the back and then on the mech's right side the only thing that sticks out like i said is that mold line that runs down the leg so overall not a bad miniature a little quirky a little weird which is sort of normal for the wolf dragoons and this is something that they had in their inventory when they came to the inner sphere so it's not in like the same boat as like the merlin where that was invented during the succession wars it just kind of shows up and that's because i think if i recall correctly the history of this mech the star league had been developing it the clans finished making it during the golden era or the golden century and um, they didn't realize that it had not been produced in the inner sphere for some reason so they just sent it with the dragoons and it was like oh uh, that's new and everybody had to like wonder where they got this thing and of course the dragoons were like oh yeah no star league cash it's definitely from a star league cash so good looking miniature i like it it's just not my favorite and that's mainly because of the way they they did the back details it's just not not super it's not like the rest of them the rest of them are very i don't want to say crunchy but this one feels like it has softer details on the back now getting into the alpha strike card for the shogun the shogun has one side with the 2f model it's 41 points it's a battle mech size 4 tmm1 movement of 6 jump missile boat short of two medium of three long of two with one overheat it has eight armor and seven structure with case indirect fire one lrm 111 and overheat long for a succession wars assault mech it's not bad and it's available from the succession wars forward the other side of the alpha strike card is the shogun c and this is also available succession wars forward i would assume that at least until the clan invasion it was only in clan space it is 58 points it's a battle mech size 4 tmm1 movement of six jump it's a missile boat and this is 775 for short medium and long giving it a way better punch than its its inner sphere technology cousin overheat of two with armor once again of eight and structure of seven and this one has case and indirect fire too so that is the shogun 
Now, before we go on to our last two mechs, I do want to go ahead and give a shout out to our sponsor, Fortress Miniatures and Games. Once this is available, they will have it in their store online for $22.49. Normally it retails for $29.99. So if you are not, if you didn't get the Kickstarter and you are looking to eventually get this force pack, they will carry it for $22.49. Also, if you want to help to support the channel and the podcast, you can do so by going to our other sponsor, The Scrapyard Orc. They do custom dice for a few different games, including Battletech, and they're really awesome. Or you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash unicorn company. We have tiers starting at a dollar. I try to give stuff away to my patrons. I have a few different force packs I'm going to be giving away, and um, yeah. So let's get back to the mechs. The next one we have here is the Pillager. This one gives me Mech Warrior Online vibes a lot. And I, I have mixed feelings on this one. The Pillager has always been kind of interesting because it has these little Wolverine style claws, but they don't actually do anything. They're just aesthetic, which the Kodiak also has little claws that don't do anything. And I don't know if there's any kind of design. There's really not. I was, say, I was gonna say if there's any kind of design relationship between this and the Kodiak, but there isn't. So looking at the Pillager, first of all, as far as details and everything, it's well done. Nicely delineated heat sinks, jump jets on the back. The arms are, are nice and detailed. All the weapons look good. The cockpit's clearly defined. Nothing that makes me sit here and say, okay, yeah, no, this isn't a good looking miniature. When we get into mold lines, though, this one, once again, this is there's sort of more than I would like to see here. So on the front alone, the inside of each leg, they hid the mold line on the hard corners, which a quick pass of the hobby knife will make sure that you never see them again. There is like a crown around the back top of the pillager, and there's a little bit of what I think is a mold line there but there's also a mold line that runs across the middle of the head section. It's a little disappointing. They hid most of it in the corner of panel lines, but right across the top, you can see it. Shouldn't be hard to clean, but I don't like seeing mold lines like that. And on the top of the mech's right arm, there is a mold line running down the center line, which isn't there on the left. Going over to the mech's left side, you can see that one mold line, and actually you can see where it runs across the entire width of the mech. It's not in any details, thankfully, so it's easy to remove, but it's it's there. Um, no other mold lines that I really see. And as we get to the back, you can see where the clip points are on the tops of the legs, although they were clipped very well. Maybe a quick pass with a hobby knife to make sure there's no remnant of them there but it, it looks like they got them super flush and all the details on the backs of the legs are nice a little bit of a mold line on each leg on the back once again easy to clean it's not really in any hard to get spots and then of course on the mech's right side you can see that mold line that runs across the torso that i mentioned so overall the miniature is not bad but it's not one of the better miniatures that i've seen come out of the kickstarter now, onto the Alpha Strike card, we have the Pillager 3Z. It is 51 points, and it's available from the Star League all the way to the Ill Clan era. It's a battle mech, size 4, TMM1, movement of 6 jump. It's a juggernaut. 663 for short, medium, long, no overheat. It has armor of 10, structure of 4, with no specials. So this is essentially an assault beat stick in the succession wars era and i'm assuming it has an xl engine given the small amount of structure but it, it's not i don't know it, it's not super super special it's not decked out with a ton of star league tech that's gonna make it have all sorts of special abilities the other one we have is the 6z it's 46 points it is available from the dark age forward and when I say Dark Age, I mean the, the whole, the Republic, the Dark Age, basically everything from the end of the Blakist era up to, you know, the end of the Republic. And that is Battle Mech, size 4, TMM1, movement 6, jump. It's a juggernaut once again. 
does lose some firepower. It's a 441 with an over overheat of two. It has 10 armor, five structure, so maybe a light engine in this one. Specials are Case 2, Flak 2, 2, Nil, and TSM. So you can use your heat to get a little bit more speed. It'll hit a little bit harder in close combat if you need to punch and, and shed some heat. And um, it's also immune to ammo explosions and can, can uh, do a better job of taking out those pesky helicopters on the battlefield. So overall, I mean, if you want more of a toolbox, you have the 6Z. If you want, well, if you want a very large stick to, to beat your enemies with, you have the 3Z. It's just not going to survive an ammo explosion. And then finally, we have the last mech of today. And that would be the Goliath. Now, this is the other quad mech that they put into the Kickstarter. The One of those being the Scorpion. And then, of course, you have the Goliath. And they went with a look that is very similar to the old 3025 art. I'm very glad they did. I, I know the Project Phoenix one has its fans. I'm not one of them. So you might hear this small click. I don't know if that came through or not. What that click is, and this is before I even get into anything else about the model, the turret rotates like a tank, which I am so happy to see. I mean, mind you, it really has no bearing in the game, um, unless you're playing one of the variants that does have the turret ability, which it does not have on either side of the card. I really think that's really cool. I have to say, this did have, I've, I've removed it in the in the 360 video you will see that it does have the little plastic stand in the middle and while the scorpion might need that the goliath does not all the feet touch the base except for the one that's in the walking pose it has a nice feel to it and, and i like this i also like the fact that i know that i don't have to try to stand this up on its legs which i never had the metal goliath the old goliath but i know when they redid the quads in project phoenix it was it was a, uh, any of the metal quads have always been a little bit of a monster to put together because of getting the legs all in the place you want them to be. And overall, the model is really well detailed. Mind you, mine now has a large hole in the middle of the bottom. It's a flat surface there, or no, it's a curved surface. But you can easily, once you remove the hole, or the, the, the post, if, you, if you're so inclined, you can easily like put some green stuff in there and... It's super simple. It's nothing really complicated. I do like that they retained the missile launchers on the sides like the original had. You can see the heat sinks facing either side of the mech on the torso. Then on the rear, there's like a large radiator assembly, which also I assume would be heat sinks. And of course, the actual body of the mech in the middle, the raised section where you'd have like the cockpit and stuff. It's all nicely done. Nice paneling on the sides. Uh, looking at the, oh, and then of course the turret is really cool. So looking at the mech, talking about the main body first, and we'll talk about the turret real quick. The front of the mech looks super clean. Literally the, the faintest of mold lines on the inside of the legs, like on the inside corner, they hid them all on the hard corners, which is wonderful. So I'm not seeing anything there. Um, also, if you go around to the left side of the mech, once again, it's all super clean. There's nothing really to, to poke at here because they hid the mold lines on this really well. From the back, I can see faint mold lines on each leg. Mostly they're on the corners, on the back legs, and on the fronts, they are more towards the middle of the legs but they're not, they don't stick out a lot. You're not going to see them unless you're really looking. And then if we look at the mech on, let's see, mech's right side, super clean. And then of course, from the top, there is one mold line that runs center line down the mech, which like if you run your finger over it, you, you don't feel it. Um, you can see it under bright enough light. I feel like I could take a sanding stick, run it right over that a few times. It's just gone. The turret for the Goliath is also very well done. There's a clip point on the bottom of the turret right under the, um, the root of the main gun. That should be easily removable. It, it's like a slight burr. It's not even anything. 
the end of the gun does not have the classic burr that you're used to getting. Um, it has little aerials on it that look really good. It has the ball and socket set up just like the tanks do. So it'll click right in there and then you can rotate it to your heart's delight. But it also means that for cleanup, you can pop the turret off. And then when you paint it, you can also do it with the turret off of the mech so that you get a really nice clean area underneath. And you can do like all sorts of details or, or free handing or whatever on that nice big flat panel on the top. Let's take a look at the Alpha Strike card for the Goliath. The first one we have is the 1H model Goliath. This is available from the Star League all the way to the Ill Clan era. It's 39 points. It's a battle mech, size 4, TMM1, movement of 8. It's a sniper. 2 for short, 3 at medium at long. No overheat value. Armor of 8, structure of 3 with indirect fire 1. LRM 111. Overall, I mean, given the amount of armor and structure you have, this is pretty good. It doesn't move super fast, but you have a lot of armor and structure just to soak up damage. The other one we have here is one point more at 40, and given what you have, it's not a bad deal. This is from the Dark Age Forward. It is the Goliath 7K. It's available from the Dark Age Forward. I might have mentioned that already. Anyway, it's a battle mech, size 4, TMM2, movement of 10, juggernaut. So this can move and engage pretty quickly. Has short and medium of 3, long of 1, with no overheat value. Armor on this is 8, structure is 4. So you lose a little bit of structure, probably from a light engine. And for specials, it has case 2, so it's immune to ammo explosions. To be fair, I would probably look at this variant over the 1H simply because that little bit of speed makes you a little bit harder to hit and gives you some survivability that you don't get from just the raw armor. And while you do lose two health overall, you get case two, you're going to do a little bit better as far as in the attrition game. That is it for today. I really do hope you enjoyed this review. And um, if you want to keep up with the content we have out there and you did like what we do to did today, hit that like and subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell so you know what comes out in the future. And uh, this is Carrie signing off. I'm going to find my meaning. I can make a change. I want to play the game. You want to sink or swim. I'm going to go down swinging. Go deep within.